28-year-old broke cashier dad receives $1,200 from stranger, is taken aback when he finds out the reason why. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to MNR TV and hit the bell so you never miss any upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Generosity and honesty are some of the values that don't come by too often. But when they do, the universe finds a way to reward the people who possess them. Such is the story of Gerald McAllister, a 28-year-old cashier who received a handsome amount of money one fine morning from a stranger. Who could it be? And why were they sending Jarrell money? What could they possibly want from an ordinary man like him? It was a sunny morning in Tacoma, Washington. Jarrell was lying awake in his bed, minutes away from his alarm going off. He didn't sleep much last night, but then again, it has been that way for months now. After the event that turned his life upside down, it was difficult to sleep. Losing a mother would do that to anyone. His thoughts kept him awake most nights, but waking up was not a pleasure either. How do you stay awake when the reality is worse than your dreams? Jarrell lost his mother to a pulmonary embolism back in December. Everything happened so quickly. One minute they detected a blood clot in her lungs, the next minute they were giving them the bad news. Life had just not been the same after that. As the younger child, Gerald was very close to his mother. He took the loss especially hard. It wasn't all bad for Gerald. He had a family, an elder brother, a lovely wife, and a beautiful five-year-old daughter. They kept him strong, kept him going. On days when he wanted to crumble and fall apart, they held on to him tight. When he wanted to give up on everything, he mostly focused on taking care of his daughter. She was the light of his life. The McAllister family was in a tight position financially for quite some time now. Gerald has been working at the store for almost 12 hours every day just to pick up extra cash. He had to put his daughter through school and did not want, even for one second, for her to not be provided for. He wanted her to have everything she ever wanted, which has been a bit of a challenge for a little while, but they all do their best. The alarm went off on his nightstand. Sunlight was peeping in through the blinds of his windows. Jarrell rubbed at his eyes with the back of his hands. It was time to get out and face the world. He got up in his bed, his legs dangling at the side. He looked at the clock, 7.01 a.m., time to get to work. Gerald was a cashier at a natural pet food store. The keys jingled in his hands as he made his way across the parking lot to the entrance of the store. He was usually the first one to come in and the last one to leave, so the owner had given him his own set of keys. Gerald was nibbling on the morning snack his wife had packed for him. Today, it was apple and his favorite P&J sandwiches. His usual day at work consisted of billing, counting the cash, handling receipts, and answering the phone. He has always been good with numbers, so this job was not a task when it came to the nature of his work. Gerald had to spend the maximum part of his day at the store. By the time he reached home, everyone would already be asleep. A few months ago, he might have complained about the long working hours, but now, he liked that his work kept him busy, because at least this way his mind isn't left to think about the loss he was coping from. Jarrell heard his phone go off in his pocket. On checking it, he saw it's a money transfer from PayPal. A frown developed on his face. Who would send him money? On opening his account, Jarrell was taken aback by what he saw. Someone had credited $1,200 in his account. Jarrell immediately turned off his phone and shoved it in his pocket. He didn't want any eyes lurking on his screen. $1,200 was a lot of money. He didn't even earn that much at the store. Who could have sent him this much money? Jarrell tried to picture a face in his mind when he thought about who it could be. He knew he owed money to a lot of people. He had borrowed money from some friends and even had a loan he needed to pay, but he couldn't remember lending money to anyone. Was it somebody his wife knows? He decided to find out. Jarrell took out his phone from his pocket and dialed home. His wife picked up on the third ring. He told her about the bizarre event that took place this morning. His wife's reaction mirrored his own. Jarrell asked her if she knows who it could be, if they owed money to anyone, or if she asked for money from someone. His wife was as clueless as he felt. She told him she was going to ask around and get back to him. Jarrell waited for his wife's call in hopes that she will have answers. 
Meanwhile, he kept picking at his brain to get some idea who it could be. Was it someone his mother used to know? But that can't be the case. His mother didn't have many friends, and if she was owed any kind of money, she would have told him or his brother. Jarrell's phone started ringing in his pocket. It was his wife. He hurriedly answered the phone. To his disappointment, she didn't find out anything. They had not lent any money to anyone. Jarrell was even more confused and overwhelmed than ever. He didn't know who to ask or what to do. Jarrell realized he was so surprised to see the message that said, You've got money, that seeing the amount alone had made him close the screen and shove his phone away. Maybe the message itself could reveal where the money came from. Maybe it is some long lost relative who happened to give him some fortune. Jarrell took out his phone and went to check the mail he received from PayPal. He always struggled with using his mail app. The words were too tiny to read by his weakened eyesight, and it looked too cluttered. He managed to find the mail. His eyes squinted to read a name that didn't belong to him. A. Trussler. Jarrell put his phone aside. A. Trussler was not a name he had heard before. And what did A stand for? Alex? Adam? Was it someone from his old workplace? Gerald closed his eyes and tried to remember if he knew anyone by that name. He called his wife again, thinking maybe she will know someone by that name. But alas, no clue. Jarrell could feel his head beginning to hurt by this point. Jarrell thought of one idea every millennial thinks of when they have to look for something, the internet. He decided he's going to search for this name on different social media platforms and find this person. Things could only go two ways from there. Either he will recognize the person or he won't. If he didn't recognize him, he could reach out to them and ask why they have sent him money. Finding someone on social media was not as easy as it looked, at least not for Jarrell. He went on different platforms and searched for A. Trussler, but to his disappointment, he could not find any leads. He did not plan on quitting though, because he had not checked Facebook yet. To his relief, there were many A. Trusslers on Facebook. Jarrell was able to find a man named Alan Trussler who lived in Colville, Washington. He was an old man, maybe in his late 50s. One thing was for sure, Jarrell did not know this man at all, and he could not be associated with the McAllister family in any way. Jarrell was about to reach out to him when he saw a Facebook post he added less than 10 hours ago. The post was about his daughter, Melissa Trussler, who had just turned 30. He was wishing her lots of love and happiness. As Jarrell's eyes roamed across the words, his brain began to click. He remembered there was something attached to the mail. Things started to make sense all of a sudden. He quickly went to see his PayPal mail again, this time knowing what to look for. Jarrell read the message that appeared on the screen. It was a birthday message from a father to his daughter. Happy birthday, Melissa. I know how much you wanted that couch for your home, so here is a little something for you. Enjoy your day, my love. Love, Dad. Things came into perspective for Jarrell immediately. Melissa's dad had accidentally sent him the money he was supposed to gift to his daughter. About 300 miles northeast of Tacoma, Alan Trussler was cursing himself for doing something so unbelievably stupid. Melissa, his daughter, was turning 30. He wanted to buy her something she would love, but 29 birthdays later, he was all out of ideas. He remembered her talking about this couch she really wanted for her place in Seattle, and then it clicked for him. He could send her the money she needed for the couch, and that way she could get what she wanted. Melissa Trussler was turning 30 in a few weeks, a new resident of Seattle. Melissa was busy for the past couple of weeks decorating her new apartment. After losing her brother five months ago, Melissa couldn't stay in the same house anymore, so she decided to move out and start a new life. Melissa had her eyes on this beautiful couch that she saw at Pottery Barn. She knew it would complete the look of her living room. Even though it was kind of expensive, she knew she wanted this couch for her place, and nothing else would suffice. However, buying that couch felt like burning a hole in her pocket. Little did she know that her dad was planning something for her too. Alan used his PayPal account to send $1,200 to his daughter, or so he thought. To send her money, he needed to input her number. What he didn't realize was that he put it in her old number, which now belonged to Jarrell. This resulted in a transfer of money from Alan's account to Jarrell's, not Melissa's. Alan called his daughter and explained what had happened. Alan and Melissa were not hopeful they would be hearing from this guy. Alan had already mentally prepared himself that the money was gone. 
$1,200 was not a small amount and who in their right minds would return that kind of money if they came across it. Melissa still insisted her dad call this person and talk to him once. Jarrell was still staring at his phone, astonished by the fact that something like this could happen to him. He knew he would return the money. There were no doubts about it. His mother taught him to always do the right thing, even if no one is watching. She taught him integrity. If she was alive now, he knew what she would tell him to do, so he did the same thing. Because of Melissa's request, Alan decided to contact this person who was now the owner of her old number, as well as her money. To his surprise, when he picked up his phone, he found a message showing that the money had been returned right back to his account, and along with it, there was a message from Jarrell. Alan's screen read, Returning the money hurts, but it's the right thing to do. Tell her I said happy birthday. I'll try to fix the problem on my end so this doesn't happen again. Take care. Alan couldn't believe people like Jarrell exist in the world. It was such a happy surprise. He called Melissa and told her everything. Melissa was deeply touched by Jarrell's honesty and decided to thank him personally. Jarrell was busy for the rest of the day. He tried not to think about what just happened. He didn't regret it, of course. It was the right thing to do after all. It didn't matter what difference having the money would make in his life. It was not his to keep. Jarrell heard his phone go off in his pocket again. He took it out and read the message on the screen. It was a thank you note from Melissa, Alan's daughter. A tiny smile made its way to his lips. Melissa thanked him for his honesty and explained how her dad still struggles with technology. At this statement, Jarrell recalled how a few months ago he received $55 from some account. He returned that too, but until now he didn't realize it was from the same person. It was from Alan Trussler. Jarrell was slightly amused by this coincidence. Jarrell started typing, You're very welcome, but if you could tell your family and friends that a low-income black man from Tacoma with a five-year-old daughter returned your money, I would find that helpful in improving race relations while reaffirming the amazing culture we as Western Washingtonians have worked so hard to cultivate, and that, in turn, would help me to stop kicking myself in the ass for remaining morally sound through the tough times my family and I are experiencing at the moment. In short, share the story, spread the love. Thank you. Jarrell didn't know where those words came from or why he started typing them or why he confided in a stranger. He didn't have answers to any of those questions, but all he knew is that he felt good returning the money as well as receiving the kind message from Melissa. For a second, he thought about backspacing everything, but he felt like those words needed to be heard, so he pressed send. The sun had set four hours ago. Jarrell was on his last bit of duties. He locked up the store and set off to the parking lot. He drove home in silence, his mind still chaotic with the events of the day. When he reached his house, everyone was asleep already. He made his way to his bedroom and lied awake in his bed for the next many hours. It was a Sunday morning, which meant no work. Jarrell was in his bed asleep for a change. He woke up to the sound of his phone, not his alarm. His phone had been going off for several minutes, again and again. He squinted his eyes, wondering who was texting him so early in the morning. Jarrell's eyes widened as he registered what was on his screen. His phone screen was cluttered with notifications from PayPal. When Melissa received Jarrell's message, she felt that his words needed to be heard, so she decided to post on her Facebook as well as Reddit. Soon after Melissa shared this story, people started flooding it with the comments praising Jarrell for his sincerity. It was important to Jarrell that his story would break some of those racial stereotypes, and it seemed like it was working. When people came to know that Jarrell was going through a tight situation financially, they were even more touched by the fact that he returned the money. As a result, people started asking Melissa for his PayPal information. They wanted to help him out. Melissa was more than happy to share the information. She was glad people were taking this initiative. It took him a moment to realize what was happening. Jarrell had received endless donations with loving messages from people he didn't know on PayPal. His mind was crowded with so many questions. He guessed Melissa shared his story because every message was either applauding him or thanking him for returning her money. Jarrell was overwhelmed by the love he was receiving from all these people. Jarrell never felt the need to check the amount being donated to him. He cared about the messages attached to it. He enjoyed reading them and planned on replying to each of them individually. 
He doesn't want the money to overshadow the sentiments behind it. He never imagined that making one decision could change the face of things so rapidly. He felt thankful for the kindness that people still share in this world. Receiving warm and heartfelt messages from strangers became a part of Jarrell's day now. He couldn't believe how therapeutic it felt. It is amazing how far a little kindness can go. Jarrell replied to every message individually. He even got engaged in a conversation with a few of them. Talking to a stranger felt oddly comforting. Jarrell and Melissa were unaware of one thing they both had in common, losing a loved one. Jarrell lost his mother and Melissa lost her brother about five months ago. Jarrell's older brother decided to contact Melissa when he saw her post a picture of herself and her brother on Facebook saying, It's been over five months since you left. I celebrate my 30th birthday one week from tomorrow. I wish you could be here to see it, bro. Jarrell's older brother messaged her on Facebook thanking her for shedding light on Jarrell's actions and how their mother would be proud of him and how he is even more proud of himself. He said that Jarrell is an amazing father to his niece and an amazing guy in general. He thanked her for everything she had done for him and wished her well. When Jarrell came to know about Melissa's brother, he was confounded. He was silent for a moment, at a total loss of words. He was amazed by how these shared experiences prove just how connected our communities can be. He was mourning for his mother, she was mourning for her brother, and fate created this connection between them out of the blue. They had never met, but they were both thankful for what they had done for each other. Alan and Jarrell had never met in person or even spoke on the phone, but they both felt that this experience was important to share in a day and age where headlines tend to lean toward negativity. They were both strangers, yet they treated each other with the utmost respect for no reason other than their mutual belief of treating everyone nicely. Now that his story is everywhere on social media, Jarrell hoped it will inspire people to engage with someone they come in contact with. We never know what people are dealing with in their personal lives. He believes a kind word goes a long way and wishes people are inspired to spread love. Jarrell had always ensured to teach his daughter the right thing, so he decided to tell his story to her as well. He wanted to see her reaction. As he predicted, her eyes lit up when she heard the whole story. She was happy that her dad is as caring as her because she is extremely caring about everyone and everything. Her parents taught her well. Jarrell was so proud of his daughter when she quickly summed up the reason behind him telling the story to her. She said, you're teaching me to care about other people. He nearly teared up. His little girl was more smart and sensible than he had assumed. Jarrell's integrity was an eye-opener for everyone. He was a man struggling with money, yet he knew what the right thing is and he followed through. His values are so rare to find. This only shows he was taught well and he is doing the same for his daughter, who couldn't be more proud of her dad. Money is an unusual thing. People talk about all kinds of opinions regarding it. They talk about ways to get rich, what people should do with their money. What responsibility do rich people have because they have money? Silver spoon versus worked my way up from the bottom, etc. What nobody talks about is how money should not be given the power to define a person. A person should solely be defined by his morals and actions. Whether an individual feels rich or poor depends on his mind. You can have $10 in your bank and still feel the richest person in the world. It is all about how you mind your constructs and the idea of being rich. If a person is grateful for the little things in life, then he is already rich. Whereas, even if you have all the money in the world but no meaning of life, then you will still be poor. Despite everything, money can transform someone's life. It, unfortunately, has that kind of power over us. Melissa was able to afford a couch worth $1,200, Whereas for Jarrell, it wouldn't last him and his family a month's worth of expenses. But what matters in the long run are the values you carry, not the numbers of your bank account. And both, Trustlers and McAllisters, share the values they live by. By staying honest, Jarrell proved that no matter the circumstance, honesty is worthwhile. By returning those $1,200, he ended up making way more with Melissa's help. If he didn't return the money, Melissa wouldn't have shared the story. People would not have been touched by his integrity, and no donations would have been made. 
Having faith in humanity means trusting people to do the right thing, to believe that somehow the chaos in this universe will be eventually resolved. People like Jarell set such examples for everyone, to make us believe in good again. It is not that difficult to care for others, to not do them wrong, yet somehow we find countless cases where that is not the case. But if there is dark, then there is also light, which is what we can take from this.